we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. But first, in case there are still some of Lum and Abner's overweight friends who haven't heard about the Horlick weight control plan, I'd like to say a few words about that. As some of you know, in a recent test in Chicago, women lost, on an average, more than three pounds a week using this plan. So it's well worth your attention. Briefly, the plan is this. To drink a good glass full of Horlicks malted milk at noon instead of a heavy, hard-to-digest meal. Horlicks is a well-balanced food, one that is sufficiently nourishing and sustaining to take the place of heavier food. But, and this is the point, the use of Horlicks avoids taking the excess calories of the heavy lunch. And that's how you lose your weight. You cut down on the calories. If you're at all overweight, try this marvelous plan. Get a package of Horlicks malted milk from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And start right away. Remember, the quicker you start, the quicker you lose those excess pounds of yours. And at the same time, save your health, time, and money. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, you know, Lum and Abner have started what they call the farm relief chain letter. Instead of sending money, everyone who receives one of their letters is supposed to respond by sending a hog. <laughs> now they have started a corn chain letter, having everyone send a bushel of corn to feed the 15,000 hogs they hope to receive. Well, yesterday, their first hog arrived from the chain letter. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Cedric Weehunt down at the Jotham Down store. Lum seems to be engrossed in a book just now. Listen. You, you ought to get yourself one of these books, too, Cedric. Uh, what's that, Mr. Lum? Why, it's called a care and feeding of hogs. Tells all about how to cure the cholera and different diseases. Thought it gets 15,000 hogs, he, he's got to know how to take care of them. And if cholera break out amongst them, I'll to take them on off before you can get them stopped. Well, I, I'm getting a little uneasy about me getting any hogs, Mr. Lum. I, I brung you fellas over one yesterday, and I passed out five letters and ain't got back none yet. Oh, well, you've got to wait till your name gets up to the top of the list. You'll get them all right. Here's a couple of days before we start getting our, you know. Well, sir, I've sat right here and watched folks going by the store here all day long, leading the hogs. I never seen nothing like it. Oh, I never did, neither. There was wagons and buggies lined up there in front of Mr. Abner's house, clean down to the end of the fence a while ago. Uh, how come they're, they're taking them all over to his house? I thought you and him was partners on this deal. Well, we're just leaving them over there temporary till we can get a fence built around some of the land we bought yesterday. Well, I never seen so many hogs in my life. Wait a minute, that's our ring. <clears throat> Hello? You can jot him down, store. I'm at his talking. Oh, well, howdy, Charlie. <laughs> uh, do what? Oh, uh, yeah, I reckon we could spare one. Oh, I don't know, Charlie, about three or four dollars, I reckon. You have? <laughs> well, I reckon they're getting pretty scarce for now. Mm-hmm. Well, we're keeping them over at Abner's place temporary. Abner's over there now. Just go over there and tell him I said to let you have one. You can just pay him there. Huh? Oh, tears. <laughs> well, there ain't no use for you to carry clean over to your place and then have to carry it back again. No, if you're getting a hog to give to us, why, just drop by there and point out the one you want to give us and just leave the money. Yeah, it'll save you a lot of bother. All right, Charlie. <laughs> huh? Oh, not at all, not at all. Glad to help you. Goodbye. Granny, that gives me a good idea. Here, we've been worrying about how we're going to get shut of them hogs. Uh, Granny, we can just sell them to these folks that's just now getting these chain letters. Charlie Luttrell said he'd looked all over the country trying to buy a hog from somebody. Yeah, before long, I doubt you they'll be bringing a fancy price, all right. Scarce as they're getting. We'd give away all we had over at the place. Bo and Paul and all us children's every one got one of them chain letters. We give away 11 hogs this evening. Yeah, the trouble is, see, all the hogs is getting concentrated in one place, sort of. Those fellas that's up at the head of the list are getting a corner on them. Well, yonder comes Mr. Abner now. Where? Yeah, I granted, now he won't be there when Charlie gets there. 
Well, I reckon Charlie will bring the money on down here at the store if ain't nobody there. Now, oh, wait a minute. That's our ring again. Uh, no, Cedric, you, you run over and wait till Charlie gets there and take the money first. Hello? Is it got him down store? I'm Edward talking. Well, how are you, Bessie? Why, yes, I did. I told him just a while ago we'd let him have one. Why, yes, I guess we could spare another and all right. Three dollars. That's what I told Charlie he could have one for. Oh, any one you want, it don't matter with us. We got so many. Uh, Cedric Weehunt will be over there. Just pay him the money and tell him I said to let you have one. Uh, Cedric, uh, Bessie Gantlin will be over there after Hog in a minute. Now, let her have one, too. Now, yeah, mind out where you're going at, Cedric. You'll run over Excuse me, Mr. Adam. Excuse me. All right, right Mr. Lum, I'll just stay over there for a while. All right, doggy Lum, something's got to be did about them now, Wait a minute, Adam. Now, wait a minute. Uh-huh. All right, Bessie, you can just go over there and pick out any one you want. Oh. And if you see anybody else that's wanting to buy one, why, tell them we've got plenty and we'd be glad to sell them. All right. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Don't mention it. Goodbye. I granny, Abner, I got an idea now that is an idea. Yeah, I got one, too. We was worrying about where we was going to sell them hogs. Why, granny, we'll just sell them out to these folks that's just now getting these chain letters. Hogs is getting scarce around here. Yeah, they're getting scarce everywhere except over at my place. I've never seen so many hogs in my life. Well, fine. We're getting them, Evan. Why, it looks like a picnic ground over there. there has been a steady stream of folks over there all day long bringing hogs. Well, I do know. Yeah, they ain't using no judgment, neither. Huh? Why, they must in a hurry. Why, they ain't asking me where I want them put. They just walk up there and dump them over the fence and leave. They're just tearing up the place. Hmm. They've got in Elizabeth's garden and rooted it all up. And they've got in the barn and bedded up under the house and in the house. Why, there's hogs everywhere you turn, them. And Elizabeth just put her foot down, too, says we can't bring another one on the place. She has? Yes, sir. Well, I think this idea of mine will get rid of them pretty fast, however. I'll paint a big sign saying, hogs for sale. Get your hogs here. We've got them. All that stuff. Well, we have. And we can just hire Cedric to stay over there and sell them when folks come after them. Well, I've been turning folks down all day. I never knowed we wanted to sell them. Why, sure. We may as well sell them. Ain't no use to keep them over and have to feed them. And by the first of the week, we ought to be getting some corn back from them corn chain letters we sent out last night. Yeah. But the main thing I come over here for a long, we've got to figure out some rules. Some rules? Yeah, they're running in all sorts of things on us over there. Eli Whitten brung a little pig over there a while ago that weren't two weeks old. Well, that letter says hog. That's what I told him, but he said he'd look the whole county over, and that's the nearest he could come to find one. Well, from oh, here out, you, you can just sell him one of them we've got over there. And Luke Spear, that crazy idiot, he couldn't find a hog, so he went down to the butcher shop and come over a while ago with two hams and two shoulders and some backbone and spare ribs and some sausage and head cheese and a jar of pickled pig feet. Said that weren't a live hog, but that it was all there. Well, for goodness sake, bound for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's sell them. I'll put a stop to all that. I've done sold, too. Two. Yeah, Charlie Luttrell and Betsy Gatlin will both be over after one. I told them just pick out any one they wanted for $3. Yeah, well, I better get back over there then, Lump, for I know that Charlie Luttrell. He'll about pick out the biggest one we've got over there. Well, no matter none about the one he picks out, for our name's on top of the list of the letter he got, so he'll give it right back to us now. Oh, well, that's different. <laughs> well, I hope he picks out that big polling chiny we got if he's going to give it back to us. He's an extra. Well, it don't make no difference. Just let him pick out anyone he wants to. You mean let him pick out one of them little runts and give us? Abner, he ain't even going to take it away from the place over there. He's just going to point out the one he wants and hand you three dollars. Well, what difference does it make? Well, none, except <laughs> Just luck to get as good a one as we could out of these. Now, don't you go over there and get in no argument with Charlie. Things is running too nice now. <laughs> hey, Granny, we're going to have more hogs and money and we'll know what to do with here in a few days. Yeah, special hogs. Oh, Swan, I never would have believed there was that many, Mom. I don't know how many we've got now, but it looks like we've got a heap more than 15,000 over there. Don't reckon nobody's been slipping some in on us, do you? Slipping some in on us? Yeah, bringing us two instead of one. 
Oh, for goodness sake, of course not. Well, I've been watching them pretty close, but only trouble, I don't know who all the letters are sent to, and I just have to take their word for it. Well, there comes Dick Huddleston, you know. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir, as far as I know, Dick's the only one in the whole community here that ain't taking no part in this chain letter business. Yeah, Dick's awful old-timey, Mom. Backwards about taking up newfangled ideas this way. Well, yeah, it's a shame, nice a feller as he is. All has been about the best fix financial is there if ever in town till this thing started. Yes, he has. Now he won't have nothing compared to the rest of us when it's all over. Yeah, I'll bound you he'll have his regrets over, too. Yeah. He'll be coming around here in a few days saying, Lum, I wish I'd have listened to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tried to get him to let me send him a letter and he wouldn't take it. Yeah. Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, Dick, come in. Yeah, howdy, fellas. Say, uh, Ezra Seastrunk must be at the top of the list now. Come by his place just now, and there must have been a hundred people standing around there with fogs to give him. Oh, well, I do. <laughs> yeah, it's taken the community by storm. I never seen nothing like it. <laughs> Everybody you see has got a hog taking it to somebody. Yeah. And letters, that little post office of mine down there is just swamped with them. Well, I do know. Now, that's what I come over to see you fellas about, too. Who started this hog chain letter, anyway? Why, me and Abner did. Yes, sir. We're responsible for all this excitement. Yeah, and we started another chain letter last night, having everybody send a bushel of corn to one another, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that way everybody will get feed for their homes. Well, I hate to say it, fellas, but I'm just afraid that somebody's liable to get in some trouble over this. Trouble? Yes, I had a letter from the post office authority in Washington, uh, asking all the postmasters to make an investigation, and if they can find out who's been starting these chain letters around over the country, why, they're going to prosecute them for using the mails to defraud. Hmm. <laughs> well, we're afraid our old friends have started something now that they can't stop. Here's an interesting letter from a patient in a Memphis, Tennessee hospital. He writes, Following a major operation in the hospital January 8th and another January 17th, I suffered a complete loss of appetite. All food and all drinks were repulsive to me. I thought of Horlick's malted milk tablets and I bought a bottle of them. Much to my delight, I found them just what I was looking for. They were the only things I could eat, enjoy, and live on. And they kept me alive and satisfied without serious loss of weight. I wanted you to know what a great blessing your tablets were to me. That letter, folks, is typical of the many hundreds that we receive about Horlick's tablets. The good, wholesome nourishment that each tablet contains is equally fine for the convalescent, the golfer, the motorist, the shopper, and the youngster at play. You can get Horlick's tablets, you know, at your druggist's in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick's, who now bid you all good night and good health.